Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 21. This tutorial will cover asset acquisitions, depreciation, and disposals. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. The first is to review the capitalization of assets purchased as a lump sum. Then we will review how to calculate initial and revised straight line depreciation and factor in betterments and revisions to estimated residual values and useful life. And third, we will review the calculation of gains and losses on assets that are sold as a lump sum. This example is based on the Skywalker data, so please make sure that you download the correct file so you can follow along. We have only one requirement in this problem, and that's to calculate the gain or loss on disposal of the land and buildings at December 31st, 2025. Now that seems like a very simple requirement, however, we have to start from the beginning and record the initial acquisition, then the depreciation, then a betterment, and then subsequent depreciation on a revised basis, and then the disposals. The first step is to make sure on a lump sum acquisition is that we allocate the purchase price separately to the land in the building. This is very common. A company will purchase land and building for a combined price, but when assessed separately, those items have different values. So in our lump sum purchase of $3 million, the land has an assessed value of $900,000 and the building $2.1 million. What we have to do is use the assessed values to determine the proportionate value of each component of the purchase. So if we take $900,000 and divide by 3 million, we get 30%. And if we take 2.1 million divided by 3 million, we get 70%. And so those two combined add up, of course, to 100%. Once we've determined the proportionate values, the rest is easy. All we have to do then is take each of those proportionate values and multiply by the lump sum purchase. In the data, the company purchased the land in the building valued separately at $3 million, but it was purchased for $2.75 million, or $2,750,000. Allocating the purchase price to the land, we multiply by 30%, gives us $825,000 allocated capitalized value, and then allocating or taking the $2.75 million times 70% gives $1,925,000 allocated value to the buildings. Of course, You'll know you've done this correctly if the sum of your capitalized values is the same as the purchase price. Before you proceed anywhere in any problem, just double check that your capitalized prorated values equal the lump sum purchase. And then to record a journal entry for that on January 1st, 2015, we will debit the land for 825,000, debit the building for 1,925,000, and of course, credit cash for 2,750. The next step is to determine what the annual depreciation is. Because this problem includes modifications part way in, the depreciation will not be the same until the very end, until the disposal of the asset. So this is a very common type of situation. The betterment occurs in 2020, so we have to calculate the depreciation for all years prior to when the modification is made. So for years 2015 through 2019 inclusive is five years. We calculate annual depreciation, as we normally would, $1,925,000 building cost, but there is an upgrade that's necessary to make the asset ready and available for use. So you have to make sure that you include any such costs. In this case, it's an upgrade to the building. Sometimes you'll get a red herring in a question where you may have, uh, during an installation, a mistake is made and something is damaged and you have to pay extra to repair the damage during installation. That particular cost is actually not capitalizable because it is not part of the normal cost that is necessary to make the asset ready and available for use. But because we've purchased the building, we need to do the upgrade. And until the upgrade is complete, the building is not ready, we can add that in. So there's a 60,000 upgrade cost. And then we subtract the residual value calculated to be 10% of the original assessed value. If the assessed value is 2.1 million, 210,000 is the estimated residual value of the building. And we're told in the data that the estimated life of the building is 50 years. So if we take all that and divide by 50 years, we'll get annual depreciation expense of 35,500. 
This depreciation of 35,500 would continue every year until something changes. In our case here, we have a modification that happens in the year 2020. So we are going to have to determine what the book value is, the net book value of the building prior to the betterment or the modification of the building. So if we take our original cost of the building plus the upgrade minus five years worth of depreciation, we should have a net book value at December 31st, 2019 of $1,807,500. If you want to shortcut the process a little bit, instead of taking the 1925 plus the 60,000 uh, upgrade and then subtracting 35,500 every year for six years, you can simply do it this way. You can take your 1,125 cost plus the upgrade of 60,000 and then in one term subtract five years times 35,500. Then what we have to do is calculate revised depreciation, including the betterment. Once we've figured out what our net book value is before the modification, then we can add in the modification or the betterment. The data tells us that there is a betterment or an upgrade at that point of $400,000. So we add that. Then we have to subtract any revised residual value. The data tells us that the residual value will increase by 50,000 over the original residual value. And the original residual value was determined to be 10% of the 2,100,000 assessed value. So that's where 210,000 came from. And we add to that the 50,000. That gives us $260,000 total revised residual value. Then after modifying the numerator, which gives us a value of 1,947,500, we then have to look at any revisions to the useful life of the asset. The data says that when we first acquired the building, the original life was determined to be 50 years. We had taken five years of depreciation, so that has passed, but then the betterment will extend the life of the building by an additional 10 years. 50 original minus 5 that have passed plus an additional 10 years on extension means that we have 55 years of remaining life. If we take 1,947,500 divided by 55 years, we end up with a revised annual depreciation of 35,409. And once we have that, we can now continue on with our T account to see how this is building up. Recall that the 2019 net book value after all of the depreciation to the end of December was 1,807,500. And then we added the upgrade. And then now we take all these years, and this is six years inclusive because now we go from 2020 to 2025. Make sure you get this right. This is 2020 inclusive. So the year, use your fingers, 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 is six years inclusive. A lot of students will make a mistake and go, well, 25 minus 20 is five. Well, not when you're dealing with full years. The final net book value at December 31st, 2025 is going to be $1,995,046, which is the net book value at the end of 2019 plus the betterment that was put into place in 2020, and then minus six years at 35,409. That gives us the 1,195,046. Now we're in a position to dispose of the land in the building. So the company decides it wants to get out of the solar panel business and wants now to sell its land and building. We go about determining the allocation of any gain and loss using the exact same approach that we used to allocate the purchase price to land and building in a lump sum purchase. At the point of disposal, it has been determined that the value of the land is $1,100,000 and the building is $2.2 million for a total assessed value of $3.3 million separately. And so if we take the individual assessed values and divide by the total value, this gives us 33.33% rounded, of course, allocated to the land and the other 66.67% allocated to the building. Just as we did with the lump sum acquisition, now with the lump sum sale price, the company sold the land and the building for a combined price of 3175000 So we simply take that sale price 
multiply by the proportionate values of the land and buildings, and this tells us what the proceeds are allocated to each the land and the building separately. And again, to make sure that you've done this correctly, your sum of the allocated proceeds should equal the lump sum price in the sale. 3.175 million times 33.3% is 1,058,228, and that's with a bit of rounding. And then the other 66.67% is the balance, 2,116,772. Now we refer to the net book values after all of those years of depreciation. Notice that the land has a net book value that was equal to its original cost. And that's because we didn't depreciate the land. Land is a non-depreciable asset. And so it remained at its carrying value for the entire time. But we did depreciate the building. And if you go back a couple of slides, that's what we needed. All of the previous work was to determine essentially this carrying value. Now we can say, okay, if the allocated proceeds between the two, or as we have shown, the total sum is 3,175,000. The combined book values are 2,820. We can determine the gain or loss on disposal separately of the land and the building. The proceeds allocated to the land are, are 1,058,228. The net book value on the land is 825. And so we see a gain of 233,228 on the land. The proceeds allocated to the building are 2,116,772, and the carrying value or net book value as we calculated was $1,995,046. This also results in a gain of 121,726, and we can confirm that the sum of the gains is also the difference between the proceeds minus the combined net book values of the assets involved. Okay, so there's just a mathematical check in place here. And then we have a quick journal entry to derecognize the building and the land and take our cash. So we will debit cash for 3,175. We will uh, credit the land for 825 and credit the building. Now, of course, in a full uh, accounting, we would debit the accumulated depreciation on the building and credit the building cost. In this example, as you look in the T account, I netted everything out through one account just for simplicity. So all of the debits were on the one side of the T account and the depreciation represented all the credits on the right hand side. So technically this should be broken out into the original cost allocated acquisition plus the $60,000 upgrade at the time of purchase and then the $400,000 betterment. That's what the sum of the cost would be credited and then we would debit the sum of all of the accumulated depreciations. But the point is that they net out to this number. And then we record the gains, both credits of course, so the gain on the sale of land, 223, 228, and the gain on the sale of the building for 121,726. Now we'll wrap up with some key points to remember. First, when acquiring assets in a lump sum purchase, make sure to allocate that acquisition cost to the individual assets based on their proportionate fair values. Second, when recording the initial asset cost, make sure that we include all costs that are required to make the asset ready and available for use. So that's where the, the $60,000 upgrade at the time of purchase came into play. Other examples, let's say with equipment, could include any freight, duties, delivery charges, setup charges, installation costs, labor to install, but those costs would have to be required to make the asset ready to be used. But if something happens during installation or somebody damages something, the cost to repair the damage would not be included because it's not a normal cost that's required to make it ready and available for use. Then prior to calculating any revised depreciation, we must calculate the net book value or carrying value from the original point of acquisition, less any accumulated depreciation up until the point of any kind of change, betterment, upgrade, etc. And we would calculate revised depreciation as the current net book value plus any betterments, less any revised residual, and divide by any remaining useful life. Of course, factoring any changes in the useful life if an upgrade or betterment is introduced and extends the life of the asset as we did with the building, we have to make sure to factor those in. So this concludes tutorial 21 on asset acquisitions, depreciation, and disposals. We hope you found it useful.